Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, and I'm doing a, a very short talk today on uh, which ovary dominates, the left or the right in ovarian stimulation. That's something which we think we know, but let's look at some evidence that's coming through. So what do we think? We think that the ovaries are equivalent and they will respond in the same way. Well, they are under the same control of the pituitary hormone, so they should, in fact, respond the same way. They may have the same volume and the activity may be similar. Now, there are some reports that do suggest an equal frequency of ovulation and others that suggest that the right dominates over the left. Now, if you look at the ovarian response, we look at the antral follicle count in the AMHN. Let's say, uh, I'll, uh, in my view, again, the antral follicle count does give you a better indication of how many follicles may be recruited, but that's my personal opinion. Now, th the question was to be asked is, does which ovary response? Does the right ovary really dominate over the left? So let's have a look at this paper, which was is quite a good paper regarding... Uh, we will assess which ovary dominates. So they, they used 100 pa patients uh, with reserve markers being the same. Uh, the markers were similar, ovarian volume was the same, and the antral follicle count was the same on both the left and the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side, the response was better. Follicles more than 14 millimeter were higher. And in all ranges, the right side did better in that study than the left-hand side. The number of large follicles were also more on the right-hand side, though the antral follicle count on both sides were very similar. So the question is, why could this be happening? Now let's have a, a rethink about it and let's look at the arterial supply. And the arterial supply for both is from the ovarian artery, but the venous supply is different. The right ovary drains straight into the inferior vena cava, while the left ovarian vein drains into the left renal vein that then drains into the left, into the inferior vena cava. So you're seeing that the overall, the perfusion may be affected in the left ovary. And the studies which do indicate that the stromal perfusion is directly proportional to uh, the follicular output and that may be affected again in uh, cases where there's less blood flow and that may again signify why the right ovary is uh, you know doing better uh, again the this second thing we would see is that the increase in estrogen levels was higher from the follicles on the right side and that's where very dominated. So if you, and there's no way of knowing that in, in that study, but uh, that's something which we will have to see when the, the right side dominates, if your estrogen levels are higher, does it give rise to more oocytes? In this study, they also found that when right-sided uh, ovulation occurred, there were higher concentrations in follicular fluid of oocytes derived from the right-hand side. And again, it, uh, it, it does uh, tell us that the right hand side, whenever there is ovulation occurring, steroids are present at a higher amount in the in the follicular fluid. Now, in this study again, in, in when women had less follicles of less than seven, uh, it did not seem to make a huge difference. The other factor which may be playing a part is that the left ovary is almost in close proximity with the sigmoid colon and, and in some cases, the adhesions, and also you're probably not able to see a large some follicles that may be on the left side because of the cover that comes up from the, um, you know, the sigmoid colon. But the surprising thing is that the pituitary response is similar, the FSH LH responses are similar, but the two ovaries may behave differently. So. You know, I'll say it's 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 a paper that probably clarifies what we already know. Uh, so my question would be, how do we use this in our day-to-day -day practice? And let's say uh, 
you've started somebody on stimulation and I'll always say remember two indicators fold which is looking at the follicle output rate and other is the follicle oocyte index and follicles uh, and follicles the number of mature oocytes and both these and fold is is FORT is what is essentially important in trying to say how many of the follicles you started with and how many are getting larger and that's an output and if the output is low on the right hand side it may be better to tell the patients here your dominant ovary is already having a lower output so why don't we cancel the cycle and try again next time around again helping the woman to try and uh, get a better chance of getting more oocytes but again I'll say please uh, have a serious think about how you measure your follicles and see by day six or day seven draw a chart and you should be able to say how many of the small follicles have I recruited and if it's less than 50 percent that is a poor response it's not a poor responder but a poor response and that's how you use this data of multiple studies to say how do I improve on the uh, you know number of follicles uh, coming and how number of eggs you get depending on which ovary dominates Thank you very much.